Hi YouTube, in my previous video I showed how to set up one of these Robinson Mercury Vapor moth traps. This is the moth trap that I use every year to see what moths we get coming to our garden. This should give you some idea of just how bright the Mercury Vapor bulb is, although I'd only just plugged it in. It actually takes a little while for the bulb to warm up so it gets even brighter than this. I remember when we first bought the trap, we set it up and then we went for a little walk and when we looked back it was like on a hill when we looked back uh, we could see up the hill it looked like a sort of a lighthouse beacon shining so it's really bright you do have to be careful not to annoy your neighbors with it it is worth mentioning as well that you're not supposed to look directly into the bowl because you can actually damage your eyes so in this video i'm going to cover i think three or four nights of moth trapping and i'll try and condense them all down and what I'm going to try and do is just uh, show you individual moths quite quickly so that you can see the various ones that I find. I'm not going to name them all in this video because it takes a long time to go through the book and uh, say what each one of them is. But uh, this should just give you an idea of the variety overall. See if you can spot other insects that get attracted to the light as well. So apart from the moths, we also get uh, caddis flies and other types of flies. We get wasps, uh, parasitic wasps, and normal wasps. And then we also get a lot of beetles and ladybirds. Uh, lace wings are also attracted. And sometimes bumblebees are attracted too. So I do have to be careful when I take these egg cartons out that there aren't wasps on one side because you could easily get stung. So the earliest birthday that I can remember is when I must have been about four or five. My parents bought me this nature bag, sort of satchel type thing, to go over my shoulder. And inside they'd filled it with useful wildlife hunting equipment. So there were um, tubs for collecting insects. There was a, a magnifying glass, a little pocket pen microscope. Um, they'd also bought me a proper microscope to go with it. And they bought me the Oxford Book of Insects, which is still to this day a really useful book. Um, full of like really nice illustrations of caterpillars and uh, moths and what I got really into was the hawk moths. I remember on that particular birthday as well my dad had also built me um, a cage with like mesh on the sides of it, wooden framed cage and he'd bought me some atlas moth chrysalis, the giant atlas moth, like an absolutely massive moth and these things are all wrapped up, so they, they're wrapped in leaves and they're really interesting looking cocoons. And you basically just have to wait for them to hatch out. And we did, and I got to see them hatching out into this cage. It was absolutely amazing. But um, that was obviously a very early moth memory. Another thing that was really an early memory for me is I remember being at school and there was a kind of uh, fence around the whole school. It was that kind of mesh wire fence. And I remember looking through the fence one morning and seeing a pair of poplar hawk moths mating. And if you've ever seen hawk moths mating, they join themselves together um, by their abdomens. So they're kind of uh, connected. And I could see this and I managed to somehow get my tiny little hand. Again, I must only have been, I don't know, six, maybe six or seven or something. I put my hand in through this fence and managed to get them out and then I rushed to show my teacher and luckily my teacher was really kind and managed to find me a box so that I could take them home and show my parents. Incidentally you've probably noticed a few freeze frames I've been adding into this video and that's because we get a lot of orange underwing moths in the trap um, and it was a way for me to show you that they've got these orange wings underneath. Um, so this one here, for example, as I touch it, you'll see like in a second I'll do a freeze frame so you can see, there you go, the orange wings underneath. Otherwise you just wouldn't get to see them. So going back to my poplar hawk moth story, if you haven't seen poplar hawk moths before, they're a very sort of bluish grey moth, really huge. And so for me as a little boy, like they seemed even more massive. And I only really recognised them from my Oxford Book of Insects. I had never dreamed that they could be that big. Right, the moth you're just about to see disguises itself as a bird dropping. See this one black at the base and then you've got white in the thorax area. Another memory I have of being a very young child is when I was visiting my gran in Kent 
and we went for a walk and uh, there was loads of rose bay willow herb about and I found an elephant hawk moth caterpillar so if you haven't seen those an elephant hawk moth caterpillar is really quite massive and it's a big brown caterpillar nice and fat and chubby and when they're kind of fully grown they've got these massive eye spots it's a way of scaring off birds and other predators by making them look like a larger animal like a snake or something I took that one home and it pupated on the same evening. My uncle Tim also found an elephant hawk moth caterpillar when I was young and he gave it to me in a tub and it pupated on the same evening and I kept it until it hatched into a moth. The footage that you're seeing now is of a buff tip moth which is a brilliant moth that disguises itself as a bit of twig. It really is brilliant camouflage as long as it doesn't decide to rest up on a bit of tile like it has here. <laughs> So a bit later when I became a young teenager in Southampton I would go looking for poplar hawk moth caterpillars on all the poplars along Riverside and I'd also look for um, lime hawk moths on all the lime trees there. I used to rear them all up until they pupated and then I would let them hatch out the following spring uh, and just release them. It was more the caterpillar stages that I was interested in. I just love watching the caterpillars eat and grow. The bit of footage you're looking at now is showing a burying beetle. Um, these obviously normally are attracted to dead animals and they bury them uh, and get the soil to move and bury the creature down deep. Um, quite often it's small animals like you know dead mice and rats. This one is also attracted to lights and you can see it's all completely covered in little mites and the mites use the beetle to hitch a ride. So they crawl onto the beetle and then the beetle will fly and the mite gets to travel. It's just a way for that particular species of mite to disperse and spread its genes more widely. I have had several species of burying beetle in the trap. We often get the various red and black ones as well. Okay, now you're looking at some cockchafers as well. Um, this first moth trap that I did was in May, which is obviously the time where you get uh, cockchafers because they're also called May bugs. I might do a separate video on those in the future because they're a really interesting beetle. They're really friendly, I really love them. You can kind of uh, play with them quite a lot and when you hold them on your finger you can get them to fly off. So going back to memories I have of caterpillars and things when I was a kid. I mean I always used to carry a matchbox with me around wherever I went when I went to school and things just in case I found an interesting insect or something. I used to really love things like tiger moth caterpillars any kind of cool hairy caterpillar I try and catch and uh, just yeah keep it with me for the day and then release it. When I was in my mid-teens I had a girlfriend who lived in Reading and I was visiting her one weekend um, from Southampton and I managed to find a whole load of vapor moth caterpillars which I'd never seen before. I saw the whole life cycle there on a bush. You could see the caterpillars eating the leaves you could see um, the chrysalis on the wall and also hatching out of the chrysalis you could see the moths and with the vapor moths they the females hatch out and they don't fly so the males just fly to them to mate they give off a scent um, but the caterpillars are quite hairy and I just thought this was really cool I was going to collect as many as I could take them home put them in a box and rear them up so I collected all these hairy caterpillars not realising that they were going to give me an allergic reaction. So I arrived at this poor girl's house and covered in a rash, like all down my arm and stuff. It was really itchy and uncomfortable and really quite embarrassing because I didn't get to see this poor girl very often. So, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. But on the plus side, you know, I got to rear up some vapor moth caterpillars and they are a very cool species. I like them a lot. And they lay all their eggs on the... Um, on their pupae as well so you can get to see if you're very lucky the whole life cycle right um, what I'm showing you here in the video are loads of elephant hawk moths that I got in one trap so just on one evening I think I probably got I don't know 10 maybe even more of these elephant hawk moths I also got a small elephant hawk moth in the trap as well um, which I'll show you separately in a bit Incidentally, going back to the vapor moths, um, the reason the females can't fly is because they don't have any wings. So that's pretty unique for a moth, really, not having any wings. 
So sometimes when I get hawk moths in the trap, what I like to do is keep them for a couple of days and see if I can get any of them to lay eggs. So the way you kind of um, stimulate them to lay eggs is just to get some food plant uh, that their caterpillars feed on and you put them in a, a large tub, put the moths in a large tub with some of the food plant and then just wait and hope that they lay some eggs. Um, obviously they have to be female to do that, it's no good expecting males to. Oh this is the small elephant hawk moth here but like I say I'll show you it uh, more closely later. This next moth is a privet hawk moth and is the best moth that I get all year and it actually didn't fly into the trap. It, I found it resting on the wall next to the trap the following morning. So it is worth getting up early to check your trap because if there are any moths, as soon as they warm up, they could potentially fly off. Um, so if you've got any just hanging around on a wall, you want to try and catch them. It is worth remembering that adult moths don't live for very long generally. They spend most of their time as a caterpillar or overwintering as a um, chrysalis. So when they hatch out as a moth, sometimes they might only have like a week or so to live. So what I make sure I do is if I am keeping any for a couple of days to try and get them to lay eggs, um, that's fine. But then if they haven't laid eggs in those couple of days, I make sure I release them um, just so that either if they're males, they can fly off and mate with a female or if they're females and they have still got eggs in them, um, but they don't want to lay yet you can allow them to go and lay their eggs in the wild. This next bit of footage shows a species of tortoise beetle that I haven't had in the trap before. You can see here there's a shield bug as well, but the one at the bottom is a type of tortoise beetle, which is a leaf beetle. Really interesting little character this, really cute looking. So all the elephant hawk moths that I caught, I put in a tub with a whole load of rose bay willow herb and none of them laid me any eggs so I just ended up releasing the whole lot which is a real shame because I would have loved to have reared up some elephant hawk moth caterpillars. The moth on screen now is a peppered moth which is a very interesting species because in areas where there's high pollution the moth has evolved to be a dark colour, very black. Uh, where there's no pollution they're light to disguise with lichen on tree trunks. This footage that you're watching now is of a swallow-tailed moth. This is a very distinctive moth, you know, brightly sort of yellow, but with the two little tails, much like a swallow-tail butterfly. Another species that I tried to hold back for a while and get them to lay eggs is this next one, the lobster moth. Here you go. The only thing is, I think, again, that I've got two males here. Uh, and they didn't end up laying me any eggs, unfortunately, because the caterpillars from this species are really fascinating. They look really unusual, like they've got these kind of extra long front legs, and they kind of wave them around, and then their abdomen, or kind of the, you know, the back sections of the caterpillar, they kind of raise them up, so it looks like a, a sort of an abdomen, uh, almost kind of scorpion-like look to them and if you harass them they can shoot acid at you like formic acid um, so I've always wanted to rear some of these up but I've never got round to it yet I've reared puss moth caterpillars in the past and puss moths are probably my favourite caterpillars because they're green and they've got these false eye spots and they've got this sort of little line so their their head looks like a nose and then the little line underneath it looks like a little smiling mouth uh, so it looks like they got this little cute face. Um, and also with a puss moth caterpillar, they're bright green. They've got two um, tails that kind of wave these little red thin filaments around. They can also squirt formic acid. Right, here's the um, small elephant hawk moth. Now if you look at the shape of the wings here on the small elephant hawk moth, you'll see a difference because they've got the kind of hollowed out sections at the bottom. Um, this is a proper elephant hawk moth uh, and you can see the wings are much fuller looking uh, it's a much more kind of overall triangular looking moth and also far bigger than the small elephant hawk moth the larvae of these feed on rose bay willow herb which is what you're seeing here in this tub rose bay willow herb is the plant that you quite often see along um, railway lines and that kind of thing with bright pink flowers very distinctive flowers the caterpillars can occasionally be found on fuchsias as well. A friend of my mum's once phoned her up and called us out 
and she had about 10 of these caterpillars on one of her massive fuchsia bushes and they had completely stripped all of the leaves off the fuchsia and uh, we didn't mind because we took them home and pupated them. This just shows the kind of screen lid that I put on my tubs for ventilation. Right, this is the privet hawk moth. Uh, this turns out to be a female and she ends up laying me over a hundred eggs um, which I'm at the moment in the process of rearing up all the caterpillars which is great fun. I'm at the stage where they're getting pretty big now and they're eating a lot of privet every day. I will do a follow-up video on how to rear privet hawk moth caterpillars because they're one of my favorite caterpillars to rear up. They're bright green, they grow really quickly, they get absolutely massive and they've got like bright purple and white stripes down the side of them and they've got this black shiny horn absolutely incredible um, creatures and also when you're keeping something like a hundred of them when they get to their kind of final largest stages as caterpillars they can get through like a bin bag full of privet every day they get through a lot and uh, I'll just rear them all up and then get them to pupate and then I can release loads of moths next spring. Okay, hopefully that gives you some idea of how good the Robinson Mercury Vapor Moth Trap is. Mine's been very reliable. I put it out in the garden, you know, each year just to see if I get any different moths. Clearly for me, it's best if I get uh, hawk moths. They're my favourite and the ones that I like to rear up the most. But um, it's just a really good fun hobby just to see what you get. Even if you just end up seeing what you've got in the morning and just tapping out all the moths to release them straight away there and then. Check out my other videos for nature walks and things I've done in the UK, um, looking for reptiles and amphibians. Uh, there's also videos about my garden pond. Check those out if you get a chance. Hit subscribe to see any videos that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.